even when you're in prison, Tommy, see when you were doing like when you had all your Osmonds, threats to life, like how were you treated in prison? So the last case I went to Belmarsh and I so I've had some disastrous prison sentences. If uh, where do we start? Um I lost my ticket. I was in Woodhill, I got I got I, I went to Woodhill for a, a mortgage fraud charge. So basically when I started the English Defence League, this is what they're doing now with Tate. When I started the English Defence League, they come in. Yeah. When I say they come in, they they closed your accounts, Dad. Your bank accounts got closed, your business accounts. They done they went back five years on my mum, my dad, my whole family. Yeah. They went through everyone. And they were trying to find things to nick anyone on. So then they started raiding, nicking everyone. I got nicked on um, they nicked my wife at the time, uh, tax evasion. They tried me on tax evasion, I got a not guilty. They nicked mortgage fraud. So basically the story was that. Um, at the time, between me and my wife, we had seven mortgages, all fully legit. Now, do you remember self-certification mortgages? Yeah. So they used to say, if you put down a 20% deposit, you don't have to, you can then self-certify how much you earn. My, my wife's little brother had said, and he was an apprentice for my company, Plumbing, said he earned 20,000 when he earned 12. So he got a fraudulent mortgage in their eyes. He bought a house. He'd done the house up. It was his first property. And then he sold it. Yeah. Four years after, so the house is sold, the mortgage company are paid back. Four years later, they boot all our doors off. I go, I got 18 months for that. I got 18 months for him buying that house. And, and you know, so he bought the house for, say, 60 grand, yeah? Sells the house for 100, no, bought the house for 80 grand, 20 grand deposit. Sells the house for 125 when it was all done up. The police hit me for 125,000 pound confiscation order. I had to pay him 125 grand. It's like, there was no crime. There was no financial loss to anyone. Yeah? But at that time, so I'm in for a little paper offence. I get 18 months and I end up in Woodhill Prison. Um, and I ended up in Woodhill Prison with, there was a case just before that where six Muslims were sentenced to 30 years. They were caught with guns and bombs on the way to kill us. It was in Dewsbury. They, they got there two hours late. It's a comedy sketch. Yeah? So there's a video of these six clowns, beardy, weirdy, absolute morons, walking across a car park. And it's the car park that we were in two hours before yeah and then they're driving home and they've got no insurance so then they get pulled over for no insurance it's actually you should it, it could actually do a proper comedy sketch so they get pulled over for no insurance police don't search the boot of the car the police nick the police seize the car put it in a compound two days later the people in the compound open the boot of the car guns suicide vests bombs ieds everything is in the boot yeah they're coming up to kill us so then the police come to see me, let me know, look, they, they come to see me and said, people have been trying to track you through, through your mobile phone. They're, so they must have had access into someone in the network who was trying to get a location for where I was, apparently. Yeah. So that's what police come to see me about. I said, okay, so these six men are prosecuted. I go to their court trial. They're given 25 to 30 years. I stand up at the end of the court. As they got there, 25 to 30 years, I was there with my cousin Kev. So we're on the back row. They had about 17 people, 16, 17 people in front of us all all big religious figures, big beards. And then there's the six of them awaiting their sentencing. And um, it's funny because they were looking at porn and that, yeah? Because they're going through all the courts. So I sat for the whole court case and they're not meant to be looking at porn. All this haram stuff is coming up on this one dude's phone. And they're, and I, I, they're all laughing. All his mates are laughing at that while they're on trial for this, what, what would have been a hurry. It would have launched, I believe, if that happened at that time, when, at the height of the English Defence League, we've, we'd have had a conflict on the streets and it would probably still be going. If six Muslims would have entered an English Defence League demonstration and murdered and blown up people, I believe it would become a tip for tat war that would have launched. So we're lucky that never happened at those times. But they get they get 30 years. I stand that as they get sentenced, I say, I, sc I shout, I scream, God save the Queen. The whole court erupts. They're all coming at us from behind. The whole court erupts anyway. Six months later, I'll do this mortgage case. I land in Woodhill Prison and I, get, I go for a meeting with my legal team and I sit down, I look across, boom, boom, boom. It's all them, it's all them. <laughs> I was just like, oh, bro. Oh, man, I'm, I, I was shitting myself. I thought, these, these are killers. They, they're, like, they're doing 30 years. They're not bothered. They're terrorists. And then, and this is in a Woodhill prison sentence where I went, I had a, a, a prison officer come to my door, screw, a screw come to my door, and he said, when they come to get you, do not leave this cell. Ex-paratrooper he was. He said, do not leave this cell. I said, what? He said, your life depends on it. Don't leave this cell. I said, okay. So an hour later, however long later, he knocks on the door with two other screws. He said, come on, you're going on A-Wing. I said, I ain't going nowhere, bruv. He said, if, if, if and he, he led me. If you refuse to go, you're going to get a nick in. You're going to be given. I said, okay, well, I'm refusing to go. He said, okay, well, you go, you'll go before the governor then. So then I got penalised as they take your TV out of your cell and you get, you get done. And then A-Wing, where they were taking me, there's no cameras on the wing. 
they were taking me to where them were, where they were. Why to kill you? Yeah, I'd have been killed. He he said he said the woman he gave me the woman's name who was who was making the decision. He said she'll get done for corporate manslaughter here. Yeah, he goes, but too late, you're going to be dead. Yeah, you'd have been dead. So then this happened. So the next day, I go for a meeting with my legal team again. Yeah, because I'm going through. I was trying to do appeal. I go for a meeting with my legal team. I come back after the meeting. I'm getting walked down. There's a room the size of this lounge. Door opens. It's the waiting room. Door opens. So I just walk in. I see bids. So I just look and think, oh, fucking hell, man. And I didn't even sit down because I just stood my back to the, I put my back to the wall. Prison officers locked the door and boom, I lost my teeth. I got battered. Even, I, I, they all rushed me. There's three of them. The sickening thing. So when I landed on the first night centre, I didn't ever go on protection in jail. Yeah? So I landed on the first night centre and I come out and there's Muslims in there. I said, do you know who I am? To this young Muslim. I said, I haven't got a problem with you. Yeah. But if anyone wants to have a problem with me, I'm more than happy to have a straight up problem. Yeah? Don't, I don't want those slimy shit. Yeah? Or, or, or snaky shit. So I haven't got a problem with you. Let me make that clear. Yeah, but if you know who I am and you want, it, and there is a problem, just let me know. Yeah. He said, I've got no problem, brother. I said, okay, cool. Yeah. yeah, fucking, when I'm getting rushed in the cell, when I'm getting rushed in the waiting room, as I come round after, I'm, I'm swinging out fighting and holding on to one of them, I get battered. As I come out, it's him. One of them's him. I said, you little rat. <laughs> you little rat, but my teeth are missing. I'm battered. And then, I, and then, and then I'm, what, what felt like 10 minutes was probably 60 seconds. But I knew by the look on their faces as well, they didn't know I was coming in that room. So when they opened that door, I saw them look and I thought, and I, I looked at them and I saw them look like they're all looking at each other thinking, Tom Robson's just getting put in our room. So they done what they done. And, um, and, then I, and then I got shipped. So then I got put down the block. I see the governor um, and then I got transferred to Winchester prison. But each of my prison centers, so that's, that, that happened in Onley, that happened, that happened in Woodhill. Um, and then I was went down to Winchester Prison and I had a great prison sentence in Winchester Prison. Do you know why? Because there's not enough Muslims in there to do anything, if I'm honest. And they didn't have the complete control of that jail. They have complete control of most jails. I went into Wood, I went into Wood, there's an episode on 25 in police custody. I'm in Peterborough Prison. I'm on a 12-day license recall. It was to prevent me stop, stop talking at Oxford University. So I was due to talk at Oxford University. Please come and grab me. Stuck me in jail on recall to miss the date. So I was, I was on recall. And when I landed at Peterborough Prison, I said to them, I said, you know who I am? I'm here. I'm, I'm out in 12 days. You know what's going to happen out there, yeah? I'm happy. Just lock my door. Let me out in a week. Let me out, yeah? And they said, oh, do you want to go on protection? I said, no, I don't want to go on protection. I'm not going on protection, yeah? Okay, you're going on B-Wing. So I said, all right, I'll go and be with And my, my instinct, I, I know I've, I've done what I've had to do in previous pr prison centers, we're going to Bedford, to survive, yeah? So I'm sitting there, I'll go on to, I'll go on to B Wing, and my instinct would be protect yourself, protect yourself straight away, yeah? Anyone comes near you, protect yourself. And I remember walking, I was going upstairs, and I remember looking, there was a few, few Muslims on the wing, there was four Muslims from Bedford, they got 20 years, they cut someone's ears and nose off, like a famous thing near where I live. And my head was telling me, boot him. My head, that's what my head was telling me, yeah? My head, and I was thinking, I'm out in 12 days, yeah? I just need to get through these 12 days. I don't need it any longer. So I didn't do anything. I just thought, get through the 12 days. And every time my cell door opened, I'd come out of my cell and I'd stand my back to the wall downstairs. Yeah? So I'm thinking, I have to be ready. Someone's going to come for me at some point. I've got to be ready. And I can't get caught lacking in my cell because that's where they'll get you and, you and you'll be gone. So then I come out, so my cell comes out and no, no one has my back in there, yeah, because there's too many Muslims. So I come out and on 25,000 police custody, I'm standing there and some white boy comes up to me and he says, Tommy, you're going to get done with boiling water. Yeah. I said, who's going to do me with boiling water? And he says, um, and he, he says, whatever cell number. And he says, look over. And I looked over and there's a Somalian kid and there's the boy from Bedford. Yeah. And they're talking at the door of another cell. And he goes, mate, the amount of money they've put up for, for you to get done, it might not even be a Muslim that does you. I said, all right. And he, uh, and he goes, but the Somalian kid's going to do you with the boiling water. So I said, all right, sound. So I walk straight over and fill the Somalian kid in before he has a chance to even look. I, I said, which one? And he says, him at the door. So I said, okay. So I go over and I fill him in. And then, um, and then all the screws break it up. And then I go before the governor and I say, mate, he's going to do me boiling water. I'm not waiting to get boiling. They put him in jail, you know, they get boiling water, you put sugar, sugar. in it, sticks to your face, you're gone. Your face is gone. I'm not waiting for that. Yeah. So I go over, I fill him in. And when I fill him in, you can see me on, you can see me on the footage and I've got my arms open and the imam's there. Yeah. I've got my arms open. And what I was saying, I said, is there anyone else who, 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 who wants to do it? So, but then I get nicked. Then I get nicked in the jail. Go before the governor and I say, mate, I told you lot. When I landed in this jail, I told you my life's in danger. 
You decided to stick me on a wing full of Muslims who were up for 25 years in that year. You decided that. They wanted to do me a boiling water. I protected myself. So nothing happened in jail. I, go, I come out of jail. I go on holiday with my kids for two weeks. I land at Luton Airport. I'm nicked for a racially aggravated attack in jail. And then they, I stand Crown Court trial. They, they, but they were forced. This was the first time I ever had good legal representation. So they, I got not guilty. They were forced, but they, they, the actual, my, my defence forced the prosecution to basically pull their case because when they went through all the stuff, it showed from the records from when I got to the jail what I'd said, but they didn't release it to my prosecution or something. So they were hiding the fact that the prison knew I was in danger. They knew I shouldn't be where I was. They put me there. Yeah. But anyway, so that was that was bed. That was Peterborough. Um, where else have I been? Bedford. I mean, like the, when I went, I, went, I got to Bedford Prison, but you know, rival gangs. Yeah. When they've got a rival gang from a different postcode, you're not allowed to be on the same wing in jail. Yeah. You've got Tommy Robinson, right? Who's the rival gang? <laughs> it's Islam. It's, it's, it's all followers of Muslim, uh, of Islam. So I land up at Bedford Prison. It's my local jail. I forget what I was doing on this case. I've done, I've been in 10 prisons. And when I, all oh, because of this politics. And, and, and when I landed there, I looked at the receptionist, I said, you've got a brother called Mark. And he said, yeah, I knew, I knew his brother. I knew straight away from the face because my local jail. I said, I know your brother. He goes, yeah, I know. I said, mate, um, find out. And then we were going through where the most Muslims are. Most Muslims are on A-wing. It's the biggest wing in Bedford. And you usually go straight on induction wing when you go to that prison. And I was asking, mate, I said, is Jason in here? Is, is Johnny in here? I was asking mates I've grown up with, find out where I've got friends to try and get with some of them. So we established some of my friends are on B-wing. There was a few Muslims. There was a famous, another case where the Somalians, there was a big case where they got shot dead in Milton Keynes, all Somalian gangs. And they were all in on A-wing. So he comes back and then he, he goes, I'm gonna, I've got to go up and see the governor. So he comes up, he comes downstairs. He goes, sorry, Tommy, man. I said, what? He said, you're going on A-wing or you can go on the numbers. Protection. I said, I'm not going on the numbers, bruv. I said, I ain't got, I have done nothing wrong to go and be housed with paedophiles. It's not happening. He goes, yeah, you're going on A-wing then. And I, he goes, so I think they were thinking I'd, I'd choose the numbers. So I said, give me a pen and paper. So he gives me a pen and paper. So I write six pages detailing the threats I've had from terrorist groups, from Osman warnings, the gangs that are in there locally to me. I know the names of the gangs, the, the Pakistani gangs. I list it all. I say, your job is to keep me safe as a governor of this jail. Yeah, you have a, you have a duty to keep me safe. You know these people will want to cause me harm. So I, I, I think he's going to read that. Now that's on file. Yeah, he's never going to make me go on a wing. So I'm sitting there. He comes back down. He goes, "You're going on a wing." I said, all right, that's the sound. And as we're walking on to A-Wing, I said, are you ready, boys, to the two screws? And he goes, what? I goes, watch what I fucking do when I get on here, man. And then we're walking on. And as I walked on, I mean, you know, like you're walking on, you've got all the landings. And they're all howling, cheering, yeah, as I'm walking in. And I'm walking in. And I'll be honest, I'm shitting myself, yeah. I'm thinking, fuck, man. Like, I, didn't, I didn't think they'd be able to do this, yeah, in my local jail, just bring me to them. So they bring me up. It's 10 to 12. They put me in my cell. Lunch is at 12 o'clock. So the workers are obviously out. The, the, pris the, the, the prisoners who have got jobs are obviously all out. The word's gone round. <clears throat> I go straight to my cell window and I said, your fucking paedophile would be on the D-wing. The D-wing is the paedophile ring, yeah? So I said, yeah. And I start, I start giving it through the windows because I know I, it's a, it's, I'm doing a, protect, a protection mechanism here because I can't wait for them to get me in my cell. So I go up and I'm arguing with everyone and they say, you're dead. I said, I've heard that for six years. I've had two black eyes, you shit houses, yeah? I said, like, I said, everyone agrees with me because everyone, I said, everyone, you're bullies. Everyone agrees with me. I said, all the white and black boys will come to my cell and they'll give me thumbs up because this happens in every jail, yeah? They'll all secretly give me the thumbs up because you lot of fucking bullies. The way you act in these jails and I'm having all this through the windows <laughs> and they were like, you're dead, you're dead. And I remember hearing some black dude was laughing saying, who the fuck is this geezer? And I was like, and, then, and I was like, I'm on the wing, you mugs, yeah, I'm on a, and then I'm, and then but I know when that door opens, I'm getting out of that wing. I'm getting out of that cell. So the door opens for, for lunch. I go flying out of the cell. I go straight down into canteen. I walk in, I say, who's fucking Muslim? Yeah, D and Dion, Dion, a uh, little gangbanger from Luton, who I got a lot of respect for. His brother, I knew his sister. I actually like him. He's converted to Islam, so he's like, yeah, actually, I'm Muslim, bruv. I'm like, oh man, and I'm I'm needing to kick this off because I'm otherwise I'm getting it. Yeah, so I'm the, so I'm like Dion, and then a white boy next to him goes, yeah, I'm fucking Muslim, and I don't know the white boy, so boom, I'm grabbed him, I'm fighting with him. 
all the screws have come, broke it up. I'm in such an adrenaline rush. But then, and then I, as they pulled me out, I see another black boy, Wesley Barker. He's got a big beard. I said, you, bruv? Because, and I know it. He goes, actually, man, I'm not, because I'm thinking everyone's Muslim now and everyone hears, everyone's on me. And then as I, and then they dragged me up to the cell and I'm drenched in the, it's the biggest adrenaline rush. That moment was, the, and, and, and they put me in my cell and they locked the door. And I remember just screaming, ah, because I thought, I thought I was dead. I thought I was dead. And then I was screaming. But in that moment, in that time, that's a fight for my life. Because if that doesn't happen, when that happens, I'm down. So then I get nicked and you get a punishment. You're in isolation. So I, yeah, I've done that to get isolated. Yeah, I had to. I'm not asking for protection. But when you do that, you get put on 23 and a half, 23 and a half hour bang up in the, in the basement of the jail. So I'm then taken down to the basement of the jail. But before that, I'm shouting out the windows like, like because I was, I was like, I thought I was dead, lads. And I get locked. Then I'm down in the basement of the jail. And then they bring McDonald. The boy's name was McDonald. I didn't know who he was. When I hit him, he had a big beard. And as he comes through, I'm, he's in the cell next to me. And then they brought my other mate, who I know from outside. He's in the cell next to me because he smashed up his cell before court or something. So we're all talking in the cells. And then his, this Muslim lad's trying to quash it. Going, you actually, man, like, fucking what the fuck? And I'm like, why are you trying to quash it? And then, and as they brought him out, I looked through, I said, McDonald, like, I knew him and his brother. I said, you motherfucker, man. He goes, and he goes, you actually, you're... and I said, you converted. And he, and he, he's like, and, uh, and then and he was trying to question because he knows who I am. I know him. I, he goes, knows when I get out, I'll know him. I move in the same circles as him. And he was like, what the fuck, bruv? I said, bruv, I've got to survive this, man. I've got to, and then the priest come in and started on me. The priest literally started on me. What did the priest come in and goes, I think you're fucking clever. I went, you what? And because I refuse food again, I, I said, I'm not eating anything that's halal. So yeah, I want chicken that's on the menu, but I want non-halal chicken. I'm just being a little prick, I was, yeah. But I said, I want non-halal chicken. So get me some non-halal chicken. And then they can't get you non-halal chicken. I said, but how come I don't get a choice? And I'm, I'm just, by this point, I think, yeah, I'm going to cause mayhem in here now. Yeah, I'm going to cause mayhem. And I'm arguing and all the travelers are on my side. And they're going, yeah, what are you? And I say, Catholic, because I know what's coming. Yeah, yeah, fucking pedophile. said I can hear the travellers going, well, what? And then, so the whole place is erupting, man. And I'm thinking, what are they going to do? Yeah, because the whole, I mean, the whole jail is erupting now. It's all going. And then my mate comes back from, and my mate's shouting from the cells upstairs saying, I've got his back and all hell's going off. The priest comes in and says, you think you're clever, don't you? I know what you've done. I said, what do you mean? He goes, you fucking, you, you've done this to get, to, get, to, get, to get down here. I said, yeah, of course I fucking have. What do you mean? But he literally, the attitude he had with me, I said, how many people are you actually listen to you? Because everyone in here is converting, bruv. Oh, I just got really wound up. It was a local priest. And then, uh, and then I thought, what are they going to do? Well, how are they going to deal with this? And at about six o'clock in the morning, next morning, they come in, security. I've got ACAD to Woodhill. Did you ever think they would poison your food or anything? Yeah, I didn't eat, did I? So when I went, when I, when I went to Onley, so when I went into Onley on the... When I went to, into Onley Prison, I got arrested for the contempt charge in Hull, which were in Leeds, where I asked the Muslim, how are you feeling about your verdict on his way into court? They took me in on the contempt charge. They put me in Hull Prison, where there's not many Muslims. I was fine. They put me on the healthcare wing. So I refused protection. They put me on the healthcare wing. So I'm on the hospital wing. People who are in there for hospital. So I was sound. I was probably in there for about 10 days. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I thought, this is all right. I'm safe. There's no risk. I can deal with this. This is all right. And then, because um, every other jail, I've had to fight my way through it. So I thought, I'm safe. And then they come in the morning and they said, you're getting transferred. I said, where? And they goes, we can't tell you. We'll tell you when you get in the car. So then I'm thinking, am I going to kick off? So I'm thinking, well, if you sort of sank out for me, now you're not just going to transfer me. Have you sorted something out? And they said, yeah, it's all been sorted. You get transferred. So then I get in the car. So where am I going? They said, Onli. I said, Onli? And Onli's got the highest percent of Muslims of any CCAT prison in the country, yeah? So as I'm on the way there, I'm thinking, right, something's got to be sorted, man. They must, they must have some unit in Onli that I'm going to go to in Onli. So I land in Onli. And I go before the governor and he goes, well, I think you know what's going to happen here, don't you? I said, yeah, I do. Well, you do, didn't you? He goes, well, you're going to be in danger, aren't you? I said, yeah. He said, you're going to have to isolate yourself then, aren't you? I said, what do you mean isolate myself? We're well, going to have to self-isolate, which means you're going to have to want your door locked all the time. And I'm such a, and maybe I should have just said, yeah. Right? But I said, no. I said, where are you putting me? And he said, we're putting on this wing. I said, well, you open the door, I'm coming out of it. And then he goes, we're well, going to get her. I goes, someone's going to get her. Yeah? I said, but you bought me here. Yeah? I was fine where I just was. You've brought me here. 
So then, they, then he goes, well, you're going down the block. I said, what am I going down the block for? He go, so the block's where you go for punishment. Down the block, you're on 23 and a half hour lockup. You get, you've got a little blue mat, that's it. And there's no TV, there's no electric in there. You just, it's where people go, stab people, do mad things in jail. You end up down the block. So he said, you're going down the block. So I think, what the fuck am I going down the block for? You've, I haven't done anything wrong here. Yeah, you've brought me here. You're asking if I'll self-isolate. I'm saying no. Yeah? Why would I self-isolate myself? Lock myself up for like if, if the door opens, I'm coming out of it. Yeah? Give me a job. Do what everyone else does. You brought me here. Yeah? And you can deal with the problems that come from it. So then he puts me down the block. I'm taking down the block. So I'm in the block. So then I say, well, I ain't eating or drinking yeah? at all. And the reason being that my food would come to me in a little box and it says Yaxley Lennon on it. Yeah. So the lads that deliver the food or the people working the servery, the best job in jail is servery. The Muslims run the jail. They've got all the best jobs. They control everything. So my food's getting delivered to me. You actually learn, you can get anything you want in jail, smuggled in, yeah? Anything you want. It wouldn't be hard to get rat poison. It wouldn't be hard to poison my food. So I sit there and think, well, and the, but the, the reason was the World Cup starting in a week. I wasn't there for the World Cup. I ain't got a TV. All I was thinking is, well, I'm in jail. Get, get a TV. I'll watch the World Cup. Yeah. So it puts me down the block in on Lee. And I say, well, I ain't eating or drinking till you give me a TV. He said, we can't have a TV. There's no, there's no sockets in here. I said, like, What's I didn't put me here. You put me here. Why am I being punished for no TV? So this is going on. So I say, I'm not eating or drinking at all. Yeah. And then I'm talking to the other lads in the cells. And this is where it gets so sad. You've got a prison governor on next in you. Mm -hmm. Ask him about spice. Yeah. So this boy in the cell next door. And I used to get, you get 30 minutes a day. So my 30 minutes, I'd come out of my cell, I'd get put out and there's li like a courtyard. There's all the cells and they all look in on this courtyard and I'd literally preach. I think the first day I walked out, I said, Islam is the cancer. I am the cure. Yeah. And it's my half hour. So, and then I'd be debating and in the end, becoming friendly with some of the Muslim lads, having a laugh with them in, in, in the thing. Yeah. But saying, lads, I'll shoot him on this. I'll shoot him on that. I'll be going through and dissecting all the stuff. So when, they, when the imam would come, they'd obviously be asking him about the age of Aisha. Stuff they don't tell you when you convert. I said, oh, you just, they just convert you. You don't even know what you converted to. Then the imam come, he goes, can you stop, please, Tommy, stop. I said, stop what? Tell them the truth. Stop educating them. No, I won't stop. I won't stop. But I refuse to eat. But what they didn't know, so every time the food comes to my door, I said, fuck off. I'm not eating that. Yeah. I'm not eating anything. Don't bring me any food. Don't bring me any drink. I'm not eating. Yeah. And I'm going to end up collapsing. And when I collapse, I'm going to end up in hospital. And then it's on your prison. Yeah. Because you've done this to me. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. But the lad next door, this boy's next door, he's been down there two months. And what he's done is he's getting out in, he's, he's getting out in about eight weeks. But he's hooked on spice. He come into jail, not a drug addict. Now he's a drug addict. And he's cancelled all his visits because he don't want anyone to see him in the state he is. So he smashed up his cell so he can get isolated so that he's not near drugs. This is what the kids had to do. He's sitting on 23 and a half hour bang up on a blue mat with nothing voluntarily. Yeah, He don't want to come out of that room because when he gets freed in eight weeks, he wants to be a bit normal. He doesn't want to be hooked on drugs. This is what he's done. So he's in there. I'm talking to him, the boy next door. And, and we have a shower at the same time. So he's... But I'd go in the shower and he'd pass me under his cereal. He'd pass me under his apple, yeah? So I would be eating, but the prison don't think I'm eating anything, yeah? So I'm in there and I'm, I'm getting my stuff. And each day I'm going back. And then on, on the seventh day, he, he calls me in. The governor calls me in. He goes, right, sign this. I said, what's this? And it was saying that you will be relocated on the wing, um, but you will not be allowed out of your cell. You will still be taken down to... The, and it was, it was that I was doing, doing it voluntary. I said... No, I'm not signing that. Yeah. I'm not doing this. Yeah. You fucking done this. All right. So put me back in the cell. And then they take me back in the cell. And then 10 minutes later, they bring me back in. They said, okay, we've reworded it. We are forcing you. Yeah. But we're going to put you on the wing with a TV. Yeah. Will you eat if we give you a, if you, if this happens? So I'm looking, thinking, England are playing tonight. Yeah. So I, I said, what time? <laughs> when is this? If I sign this, when is this going to happen? Is it going to happen before the football? He said, yes, it's going to happen before the football. I said, I fucking signed it. <laughs> so he, he, he signed it. Then what they've done is, so bearing in mind, my missus, my missus worked at a school at a time. So I'm in only prison. So I've done a week. I've done a week laying in this shitty cell. They then bring me up on the wing. But the deal is I'm not allowed out. So the cell's locked. So I'm on the wing, cell's locked. So people can come to my cell. I'm getting shit, proof, 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 like literally human shit, feces. Uh, feces put through my window. I've got them all at my window kicking off. I'm thinking... I was fine in whole. Who made this decision to bring me here? And what was the fucking purpose of it? Yeah. And I, and I thought, so, and I still wouldn't eat the meals I said, until I got my money. So I got my money on my canteen. 
and I bought tuna. So I had, I could afford seven tins of tuna for the week. Yeah. So that's all I had. I had one tin of tuna a day. That was it. And then water. That's why I lost 30 pounds. I come out looking like a crackhead. Yeah. But I was, um, and I was in there and, and, and for half hour a day, I'd, they'd bring me down from there. They'd bring me down to the block again for my exercise. That's where I'd have my exercise. That's where I'd have my shower. But, and that's when I could have my phone call, which was at lunchtime during the day. My kids are at school and my wife works at school. So I literally couldn't ring anyone. Couldn't speak to anyone. I mean, 23 and a half hour bang up. It, it, I didn't, it, it fr they knocked on my door. Then the screws come to my door one time and said, where's your wife? I'm laying in this cell. I'm like, what? And they said, where's your wife? I said, how the fuck am I meant to know where my wife is? Yeah? I'm banged up in here. I don't even get to use the phone at night. So they said, okay, well, there's intelligence that your wife's going to be attacked with acid. I'm like, what? And they said, yeah, they said, we need to know where she is. And then they just shut the door. I'm like, bruv. Like, it was not until Saturday, then or the, then I get to ring my wife and the police have knocked on her door and they've given her intel and my mum's that there's going to be an acid attack against them. And then what they leave them with is some little bit of paperwork that tells them what to do if you're attacked with acid. But then the, the deep thing is, and I question, was there that plan to do that to my wife or was that all to fry my head? Because it worked. I come out of that prison, you can watch a... There's a video where I come out and I watched one recently of that night I went on Tucker Carlson. I was ill. I was sick, seriously sick. Like, I was a mess. It took me, it still probably is taking it, it's, it took its toll on me, that sentence.